Hey Apex, my name is John and I am here to continue the series called Deep Dive. And today I'm in week four, we are in week four, and I want to talk about hot potato. Yes, you heard me, hot potato. Now you're thinking two things right now. One, what is this guy going to talk about? What is he on about? Why is he talking about potato? The second thing is, oh, I get it. He must be talking about the game. And those second people, you are correct. I am talking about the hot potato game. If you don't know about it, that's okay. This is a game I played in my childhood and, and during primary school. And um, really, really easy, easy concept. You need an object, whether it's a ball, a beanbag, or even a potato, maybe a phone, or maybe not a phone. But it's something you can throw and something that you are worth, uh, is, is okay to throw and, and maybe not damage or hurt. Uh, but the end of the game is to, to be in a, in a group of people, five, six, seven. The number is okay. The number doesn't affect the funness. It's always fun. And uh, the end of the game is to not be eliminated. And how you be eliminated is when the music stops and you have the object in your hand, then you are out of that game. And you want to be the last person standing. And then when you are the last person standing, you hold up the object in victory because you are the winner. But you see a few things when you play that game. You see such desperation in yourself and in your friend's life to pass on that object, to remove it from you, but actually give it to someone else. And, and you see, we can link that to our relationship with God. Not that we want to get rid of it, but actually we should have that same desperation, that same care to pass it on to our friends. You see, when we pass a relationship on with our, to our friends, that takes faith. And, and, the, and the Bible mentions faith so many times. It actually mentions it 458 times in the NIV translation across the whole Bible. And that's incredible. That's a lot, guys. Uh, when I see that it's a lot, that must mean it's important. Because when our parents tell us the same thing over and over again, or when our friends tell us things maybe, or when society tells us things over and over again, that's because it's important. And that's the same with faith. It's important. It's mentioned 458 times across the Bible. And I want to look at some words in the Hebrew. Now, don't quote me on this because I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I'll try and pronounce them as best as I can. Because faith in society today is thrown around. Uh, when, when I watch my football team every Saturday, or maybe not at the moment, but when I did, I would have faith that they would win. And unfortunately, because they are Arsenal, they let me down. When I took a seat on this sofa, I had faith that it would hold me. And thankfully... It did. We experience faith every single day. You say, I have faith in you that you will not let me down. I have faith that you will not do things or you won't do this or you won't do that. But we experience it. But we actually don't use the real meaning of faith. I really want to explore that today. You see, like I said, in Hebrew, um, sometimes in the English language, we, we get lazy or we, we, get, we, we, we don't want to overcomplicate things. So we just move it into one word. But actually, when you look into the Hebrew word, there's actually different words to represent the true meaning of faith. The first word is imanah, which means you know that God will act upon it when it aligns with his will. That's the first kind of faith. The second kind of faith is aman, which means to be certain about God and his character, unlimited power, wisdom and promises. To continue to rely on God no matter the problem or the circumstance. And how we can put that into our lives is that when we pass on, when we get that desperation to pass on our relationship with Jesus to our friends, to our family, Let's not be hold up on the problems or circumstances that come back and hit us in the faith. Let's have that faith that God will answer it. God will continue in what he says with his promises. You see, there's a story in, in, in Luke chapter 5 called the story of faith. Well, that's what I like to call it. And, and Jesus returns to a place called Cabernet, which is a city just outside uh, the Sea of Galilee. And, and he returns and people want to hear him. They want to see what he wants to say. They want to, to hear what he's got to say. They want to see him. They just want to, just want to know about what, what, what he's got to say. And how I tried to help us to envision how busy it was, I thought, you know what? It's, it's definitely, just imagine when KFC or McDonald's reopens. Imagine the crowds. Imagine you no longer have to put the mask on. No, no longer have to be two minutes apart. You've got those chicken nuggets. You've got those Big Macs, those chips, the milkshakes, the drinks. I'm going to calm down because I'm getting a bit passionate about McDonald's. But imagine the crowds, and then you know what, times it by 10. I believe that's how busy it was. And they weren't in, in, in a stadium. They weren't, they, they weren't going around preaching in the stadia. They, they weren't, they were just in a house. It's crazy, but it was so busy. And uh, there's the religious leaders on the front row, and sometimes our haters are always on the front row. Uh, 
and, and the religious leaders were shouting at Je- or looking out for Jesus to see if he would say something wrong uh, and, and try to catch Jesus out. And we come to Luke 5, verse 18 to 20. I really want to read this. Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. You see, our faith shouldn't be saying that we hide or keep to ourselves. You see, like in that game, we pass it on, we're so desperate to pass it on to our friends. That's how we should be like with our relationship with Jesus. And you know what? To pass on or to share our relationship with Jesus with other people, that takes faith. It takes a real step of faith. And you see, my first and my point that I want you to know is that faith leads to action. The friends that, that we read about in the story, there was four of them, and they didn't just sit or, or look at their friend that they was paralysed and be like, oh, I'm sorry, mate. Um, that's just, that's how life takes it. That's, that's, that, that's, that's what it is. No, they were not satisfied. They were not satisfied with just that kind of faith. They wanted to take action because true faith takes action or leads to action. And what that action led them to eventually healed the guy don't be a person just to keep it to yourself i think in society it tells us that keeping things to ourselves it's all about being selfish it's all about in a world where this is how i do it you don't have to be the same as me but this is how i do it but actually we should share our story share with our friends share with our family because you never know what impact you can make jesus actually requires us to take action in matthew 28 verse 19 it says go make disciples it doesn't say stay at home and make disciples it doesn't say hide in the corner and make disciples. It says, it says go. Go. Go means to move. To actually move forward and make disciples. Are you actually going somewhere and making disciples? And what I mean by making disciples is just sharing your faith. Sometimes we overcomplicate it. We need to be this biblical knowledge person. But no, just share your testimony with someone. Share your story with someone. Don't just sit at home. Don't just share them a story on Facebook. Or Instagram, or don't just snap them saying how are you doing, which is that is all good. But sometimes we need to take a step of faith and take action and share our relationship with Jesus. If you care about something, it will lead you to take action. You see, when I was younger, I, I, and I still do, I really care about table tennis, and I wasn't very good when I was younger, uh, and I needed practice, and I cared about it so much that it led me to take action. So what I did is I would always lose to my parents, my mum, my dad, and my brother. My sister was too young to to beat me then, but. Um, it led me to take action and I got so desperate, I, got, I cared about it so much that I would, I would play against myself, I know that's weird, but I would play against people that were better than me, I would train in school, I would ask friends to, to help me get better and eventually I did beat them, but the only reason I got better or I, I did something about it is because I cared about it. Do we care about our friends? Do we care about our relationship with Jesus that we should share it with others or are we very happy just to sit on our sofas and just talk to no one? Do we care about our friends and our family? The friends in the story took faith. And you see, faith is the key that literally opens. It opens the door to miracles to take place. Faith is the key that opens the door for miracles to take place. The four friends, it wasn't just happy just to sit on their sofas and and pray for the person, which is all very important. It actually took faith. It took action. They took action. And when they took that step of faith, bam, a miracle happened. Don't underestimate that first step. And maybe that wasn't their first step. Maybe they tried it millions of times. Maybe they needed to keep pushing on. But that step of faith, when they lowered the person, and I don't know if you know the rest of the story, but actually Jesus heals him. He's no longer a paralyzed man. But actually, so it better, he finds a relationship with Jesus. You, know, you have no idea what your step of faith could do for your friend's relationship. Take that step of faith, Apex. Faith leads to action now you're asking yourself or you're telling you're shouting at the screen john you're saying all these cool phrases and and bible verses but how do i practically do that well hopefully here's some here's some ways that you can do that send them a preacher podcast read the bible pray for them faith leads to action i really want to pray for you today if any of this has stood out to you just 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 listen to the prayer and really take it into your heart Dear Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for the time we spent together. Thank you for the the faith that you've given us. Allow faith to rise right now, Lord Jesus. Just like in Hebrews, when there's real heroes of faith, I'm really praying that the people that are listening to this will really start their faith to rise. 
not just young people, but leaders as well, myself as well, Lord Jesus. Allow our faith to rise, that we start to share our faith, share our relationship with other people, Lord. Allow us to care so much that we, that we just are so desperate to pass it on, Lord. Allow us to, to have the boldness. Allow us to have the right words to say. Allow us to listen, Lord Jesus. Give us opportunities, Lord, to pass our relationship on with you, Lord Jesus. And even if, if things go messy or things go wrong at the start, Lord Jesus, allow us to keep pushing on, keep praying, keep reading together, keep sending them preachers and podcasts, and allow us to, to do everything to glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you soon.